Education under attack. 1.3 million children affected by targeted raids on schools in Nigeria, according to the United Nations. We'll be discussing ways to keep our schools safe. Free fall. Naira plunges to lowest rates in nearly 50 years in exchange for 545 Naira to the dollar yesterday. We'll find out why. And the Lagos State uh, House of Assembly passes the value-added tax collection bill, as well as the bill banning open grazing in the state. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa on this very beautiful Friday morning. It's a little wet if you uh, check uh, the weather report this morning, but thanks for joining us and we hope that you have a great time with us. I am Osao Gui. And I am Annette Felix. Thank you very much for joining us on the last episode of the program for the first week of September. The year seems to be wrapping up pretty fast, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. It's, 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 it's almost, it's gone actually. I think everyone should start mentally preparing themselves for 2022. For the new year yes, and writing absolutely. their new year resolutions in advance. Final quarter of the year, so let's let's have it. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. I am Annette Felix. And um, our top trending stories today really is a mixed bag. Um, good news not so great news as well, but let's see where, where the mix takes us. First of all, after being at home for a while, you know, um, students in Kaduna State, primary and secondary schools, can finally resume on Sunday, September 12th, 2021. And that's after the um, state uh, school's quality assurance head, Umar Ahmed, um, released the school calendar um, on Thursday to journalists. And now, listen, there was no mention of a third term in that 2021 to 2022 school calendar. And we know that the People's Gazette is reporting that a source in the Ministry of Education noted and confirmed that there will be no third term. And that instead what will happen is that those students who missed out on the third term because of the indefinite shutdown of the schools due to security issues will be promoted um, to the first term of the next academic session. And that's so they can catch up with their, with their counterparts, you know, their mates. So yes, we know about the security challenges in the North and how it has seemed to cripple academic activities. Some other states like Zamfara have issued a total shutdown of academic activities. Kaduna did the same. It, you know, it, was supposed to resume August 9th because of security, but they postponed it to September, and now finally September the 12th. So yeah, still good news for the student. You know, you're coming back to school. But two things really I must say, people have been commenting about this saying, why don't you have them do that third term? There are vital lessons for them to learn about the books and about the world in that third term uh, curriculum. And that when you say they should skip that because of failure of the government, you're basically breeding the lazy youth that you talked about. Also, it's not just about saying come back to school. Have you put protocols in place for schools to be safe? What's the guarantee that students would not resume and that bandits have laid siege for them Sunday, September 12th, waiting to swoop them from the schools and into vans and into the forest? So what are the security measures? I didn't see that in all the plans that the education um, head, director general there went on to say, but I guess we can only just um, wait and see. Yeah, you know, so I, I'll start with agreeing with the last point, you know, um, it's important to know if the schools are safer, if Kaduna State is safer now, um, you know, now that you're inviting, uh, uh, you know, these young ones back to school, um, what moves have been made, in what ways are the schools safer, um, in what ways have they improved on security in architecture in the state, if nothing has changed, then you're basically bringing them back into harm's way. I personally have never, um, you know, subscribed to the you know, idea of shutting schools down because, you know, for me, it felt like, yes, it might be, you know, you know, important, you know, because of security concerns, but I always felt like it, it, it basically told the story of the bandits winning on the terrorists rather winning, um, which I never wanted to see. I wanted instead to see that the Nigerian government won the war against insurgency and these terrorists and kidnappers and, and whatnot. And so shutting down schools felt like victory for them, uh, for the terrorists. Um, either because of those who are anti-Western education or because of those who are really just criminals and, you know, and, and chasing people um, out of uh, the schools. So, um, but of course, I still have to understand that desperate times call for desperate measures. And for, you know, the situation that Kaduna State had found itself at that time, they had to, of course, keep the kids at home to, you know, protect them. 
Um, but also, the third term that has to be skipped. Um, once again, desperate times call for desperate measures. And so, in order for these kids to not be left behind, um, uh, you know, in the school clock and school calendar, when the counterparts in other states across the country are moving into a new class, moving into, you know, third term, they would still be struggling with, you know, first or second term. Um, I guess this is, you know, what is necessary. And the educational system would have to find ways to make up for the third term that they're missing, you know, in the new session and find ways to, you know, inculcate some of the knowledge that they should have learned in this time um, over there. I'm sure that there's one or two who are celebrating that don't know third term uh, because, well, less stress for them. But um, it, it's left for the state government to do what is necessary, the education system in Kaduna State and all around the north um, because the other schools, the other states who still haven't um, sent kids back to school would have to make the same decision. What's the plan for protecting the students or the, the pupils when they're going back to school? And also, what school calendar are they going to be working with when they finally go back to school? It's entirely important to ensure that regardless of whatever calendar they're using, the most important thing is uh, the safety of these young ones and their teachers and you know everyone who is concerned with education in those states so we don't continue to have um, a repeat of these uh, incidents. Mm. Really, you have hit the nail on the head there, Sarge. Um, let's get down to what seems to be like a good news for Lagos State. Um, Lagos State, the Lagos State House of Assembly, have passed two crucial laws regarding their security and their economy. They passed the um, Value Added Tax Collection Bill and the Bill Against Open Grazing. Um, recall that the governor of the state, um, Governor Babajide Songwu, had earlier this week, you know, presented those bills to the House of Assembly. And yesterday, Thursday, all 40 lawmakers were present. They gave their vote on the bill, you know, they approved it. And the Speaker of the Plenary, um, Mudashiro Basa, who presided over it, um, went on to describe this as a historic feat for Lagos State. And you know that, you know, the issue of the killer heads, men, criminal heads, men, whatever name they have been tagged, um, have been a source of you know frustration for a lot of Nigerians, and not just in the north. We've seen other cases in the south as well, and how that seemed to have affected the prices of food in the market because farmers have been unable to go to their farms to conduct their business. Um, its impact on security as well, and how much of a heated topic it's been in the Nigerian polity. So um, still refers back to the Southern Governor's meeting that from September 1st, they will begin to put steps in place that legally criminalizes um, open grazing in the state. We've seen Lagos um, do that. Now, Lagos joins other states like Benue, like Ekiti, like Ondo, um, to criminalize um, open grazing. We've seen other states in the north as well. Um, not necessarily passing a bill, but the government's making a declaration that open grazing is um, banned and that the movement of cattle interstate and within their state is prohibited as well. We've seen Kaduna, Katina, and Zamfara take such moves. And also, the other side regarding the economy, the VAT collection, collection bill, we know how much of a row that really has generated too, um, with River State Governor seeming to lead that conversation by challenging the legality of the Federal Inland Revenue Service going ahead to collect value-added tax um, on behalf of the state government. We know the ruling was that the Benue State Government has the constitutional authority to collect VAT in their state how that generated controversy as well. So many other states, Aminu Masari, um, going ahead to say that no, it shouldn't be. So many other governors saying it should be. But Lagos has taken a stand. They have passed it. And now what this means is that Lagos state should begin to be able to collect value-added tax, generate more revenue for the state, and move the state forward. Um, I, I threw this question to one of our analysts on the press one of these days, um, asking... You know, if this really was a test of true federalism, if this really was going to put Nigeria on the path of devolution of powers and restructuring we've all been clamoring for. Because when states begin to sit up to say, I want to take charge of my finances, I want to be totally responsible for my security. When states begin to take such moves, that, that really is an embodiment of the federal, of federalism, the principle of federalism. Each state being autonomous in some way of being able to control what really happens in their state. So that's what we've seen happen in Lagos. Once again, Lagos State um, House of Assembly have passed the bills um, to collect value-added tax and that, and also um, to prohibit open grazing um, within the boundaries of Lagos State. Oh, well, um, so 
A couple of points that I will point out. Um, uh, for me, uh, I first of all thought it was going to be... So, you know, in, in the build-up to this, because Lagos contributes, you know, I, I believe more than 50% um, with regards to um, um, the FIRS collections nationwide. Um, in the build-up to this, uh, there were, you know, people who had pointed out that Lagos was a very, very important state, you know, with this controversy and how the tides would turn. Uh, because of what it contributes. Um, but there were also the concerns that in the midst of all the, um, you know, yes, you know, they are excited about being able to generate more money for the state and how much um, development that, you know, that uh, amount of money will be able to bring into Lagos State. Um, every state government is always excited when there's more money in the conversation. So in between that, you know, that and of course governance and some of all of that, there's still politics. And the reason I'm saying this is because there were still fears that, the Lagos State House of Assembly will be watchful over, or would you know, pay very close attention to the body language, or want to hear first from the national leader and former governor of Lagos State, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, um, before going ahead, you know, with this because it's a very, very vital. It's a very, I mean, politics-wise, you can't rule it out. It's a very, very vital, you know, perspective that he kind of would need to give. Uh, you know, a That's little go ahead. That's why we emphasizing um, on the independence of the arms of government. They should be free of well, influence from external well, parties. Well, eventually, you know, we're still going to have to face, you know, what politics is. So um, I felt, you know, that there was going to be that, you know, and so it's it's interesting to see that between when the governor, you know, uh, presented the bill and when it was signed was so quick, was so fast, and it's very, very good to see. Um, there's also, you know, the comments by certain state governors in the north that, you know, are saying that, oh, you know, if you pass uh, the value-added tax bill uh, or, you know, the anti-open grazing bill, uh, you know, uh, uh, cows will cost as much as two million naira, be your brother's keeper, yeah. or gah, relax. Um, you are governor for a reason. You are appointed governor for a particular reason, and that is to govern and to ensure that you can, you know, completely be in charge of the affairs of your state. And that includes generating money for your state. And when they make these statements, do they understand that if a cow costs two million naira, who exactly is buying these cows? It's still some of the people in the southern states that are buying these cows for two million naira because that's where they can afford it. And where's the tax going to be paid for the sale of those cows? It's still in the states where you know they're complaining about so that point just i really don't know how they put these these statements together where these ideas come from but another thing is um governors who are complaining about the value added tax um are the same governors who have large numbers when it's time for elections they have very very large numbers shocking numbers um and population when it when you know election time comes how come they've not been able to convert that co that population that they claim to have into money how come they've not been able to convert those millions of people that show up when it's time for election? Why don't those people work and pay tax? So you have these numbers, and yet you still are not able to raise any money in your state, internally generated revenue in your state. You're instead continuing to clamor for uh, the federal government to continue to feed your state while you're governor for eight whole years of, you know, every, of, of, of the lives of um, members of that state or indigents of that state. So there is that also. But something else that we shouldn't forget is the conversation concerning, uh, concerning value-added tax. Yes, the, the narrative seems to be going mostly towards northern governors who are opposing it. But there are certain people who are quiet. And that is some southern states and some southeastern states that have very, very embarrassing internally generated revenue also. And so whenever, because I heard the FIRS has also approached the National Assembly to put, you know, value tax into your exclusive list and some of all of that. I don't know why they're fighting for it. Um, but they, we, we, we should be very, very watchful that if ever... The National Assembly has to make that decision. They need two-thirds of the National Assembly um, of the states, rather, to uh, give a go-ahead for that. That's 24 states. There is some southeastern states and some southern states that might swing the other way because they know that since the times that they've been governors, they've not been able to do anything concerning internal generated revenue. If you look at the IGR map for all 36 states across the country, you would still see, yes, it's a larger number of northern states, but you would still see some southeastern states and some southern states, you know, there, you know, in the very, very bottom barrel of this, of this um, um, figures. And it's really, really embarrassing. Let, let, me, let me bring out, you know, the details for you. Um, on the Nigerian Tribune yesterday, um, we saw that a story was published. It said, um, River State 
got 4.7 billion in, naira. Out of 15 billion, yeah. Sorry? Out of 15 yes, billion. Yes, out of 15 billion naira VAT. Kano received the same, but it generated 2.8 billion naira. So that really is what we're saying. You generate lower, but you're, you're getting almost the same yes. thing as others no. who are generating higher. But that the point I was making here is, yes, the northern states, you know, majority of them, maybe except Kano, um, with regards to internally generated revenue, a lot of them are embarrassing. The figures, you know, that they generate annually are very, very embarrassing. But in that space, there is still some southeastern states and some southern states that have pretty much the same very embarrassing internally generated revenue every year. And those are the states that we really should watch out for and, what, and where they would really stand in this conversation because they are basically not ge generating anything. And if you take value-added tax away from that, they are in trouble. So, yes, it might seem like it's, you know, northern governors who are speaking out against this, but I think we should also be very watchful at some of those southeastern states and see, okay. or southern states, and see how they, you know, what, what um, position they take. Okay. Um, interesting way to wrap that up. Um, let's quickly now go to Imo State and Southeast in general. Um, to review what happened yesterday, um, the governor of Imo State, Hopo Zodima, had been teasing for the president's arrival um, that was scheduled to hold on Thursday. And um, the whole controversy surrounded that with the IPOB declaring a seat at home order, saying the president is not welcome in the Southeast and all of that. But, um, the, you know, we know that it went ahead to dare the president to come. But the president did come. He arrived at the um, Mbakwe um, airport in Imo State at around 9 a.m. yesterday. And he was received by um, Hope Uzodima, um, Dave Omahi, uh, uh, head of the Governor's Forum, the, and um, you know some other leaders in the South. We can see him there um, basically exchanging pleasantries with um, Southeast leaders. But, but really, the bone of contention here is about if the sit at home order that the IPOB declared was successful. Because we're seeing varying reports on, on the news media. I mean, look at how Sahara Reporters is describing it. Sahara Reporters headlines about the story says, breaking, Buhari arrives in state as residents comply with IPOB's sit at home directive. The Vanguard is describing it this way. They say Buhari's visit shatters IPOB sit at home order in Imo. So what really is it? But what we can do is take a closer look at some of the major cities in these states and see what happened. And um, from the reports we gathered, um, the sit at home order recorded partial compliance in places like Onicha, Oka, Newi, and Enugu. But in Imo state, we know that some people actually came out. So for some people with banners, you know, coming out to line the street, welcome the president. But of course, you would hear whispers saying these people are members of the APC. These people were probably paid. All these, you know, whispers uh, and reports would definitely come up that um, they're there so that they would not embarrass the, the governor, who was on him like that, oh, nobody was out there to welcome the president. But really, that's what it is. The president visited Imo State. The state's government and security agencies had assured Nigerians that the security there would be heavy, and heavy it was. You know, the president um, visited Imo State. Um, he felicitated with the people. He commissioned quite a number of projects. Um, let me look at them. Some of the projects that he commissioned in Imo State. I saw one that you pointed out. <laughs> Sergey, you want to take you from there? Yeah, um, yeah, I'll eventually get to the project, but um, I'll start with, you know, great to see. I think I can see on screen uh, Bishop Imano Chukuma. Um, his, I think is um, um, in um, the Anglican Diocese, head of Anglican Diocese in Inigo State. Really interesting personality. Great to see him. I, I miss him, actually. Um, but anyway, um, so yesterday was filled with a lot of controversy. Um, and yes, there was, you know, still a sit at home. Uh, all the people that I spoke with, you know, in Inigo State, most of them, you know, didn't go anywhere. Actually, a lot of them didn't go anywhere yesterday um, because of the same sit at home order. In Inigo State, it was pretty much the same thing. Um, yes, you know, I'm not going to jump, you know, and, and, you know, completely agree that uh, crowds were rented or people were paid, you know, were paid to come out, you know, but um, there's that, there's always, you know, in Nigeria, there's always, you know, that uh, possibility. But I think it's also important that we know that even in the Southeast, there are still APC members. There are still people who support the government and who will come out anytime, you know, when APC is doing its campaigns. They, they are still um, APC, the whole of the Southeast is not completely filled with them. Um, Abga or PDP or, you know, any other party. Um, there's still APC members who would like to also show their support. Um, but did people like to sit at home? Yes. Um, you know, businesses were, in, you know, open. Um, uh, the spokesperson, I think, of the Imo State government, I'm not sure who it was, said that uh, the market people 
or uh, the leader of the market rather, uh, uh, decided that in honor of the president's uh, visit, they're going to shut down markets, which I personally don't believe. Um, I think that you know the markets just didn't open in Imo State uh, yesterday, and everyone actually did stay um, indoors. Um, what this means is it's not a very very good look, you know. Once again, and that's one of the reasons we brought, brought up that conversation with um, um, Ucho Kuku, the um, deputy president of uh, Ohanaze Indibo Worldwide, and I was asking him what Thursday would look like if people actually do sit at home if they don't come out. What does that say concerning who really controls the ears of the people of the southeast? And so that's how it turned out yesterday. Um, another thing is with regards to security that was uh, was necessary in Imo State yesterday because of the president's visit, and that also paints a terrible picture of um, what they expect and what you know the way that the president has handled uniting the country and his relationship with the southeast. If they had to bring that many, because I saw the convoy, a uh, video of the convoy, if they had to bring that many security agents just to be present, you know, at, at where at the at Imo State, where the president was visiting, that's not a very, very good, you know, picture also of what the president's relationship is with the people in the southeast, and also because of the security um, challenges that Imo State has also had with the ESN and, and the likes, um, and you know, yeah, I guess with the IPOB, um, doesn't also paint a very good picture. Um, the president's um, tailor was also called to question. Uh, some people said it was um, very likely Ab Abakari who made his pants. Um, and, you know, that, that was just, you know, for this funny side of the whole visit. Um, because, yes, the, those pants looked, looked very, very bad. <laughs> the DSS needs to pick up that tailor and, and lock him up for a while. <laughs> they looked terrible. But um, it, it, that's just, you know, on a lighter note. The project, and, you know, I said this yesterday, mm -hmm. that I personally didn't agree with a president moving from state to state to commission some of the most basic things that normally should be there. A tunnel, drainage, is what the president left Abuja Got to, time. you can let's, imagine, let's be basic, to go time. commission. No, I mean, so let's call it a tunnel because that's what they call it. It's, 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 um, I saw the you know, plaque or that, that thing. Um, it was called a tunnel. That's what the president went to commission. And, and that's, that's the kind of thing that I feel that we should put you know, in the past should in Nigeria. Have not been there it should have died in the 90s. It should have ended exactly. Ago. It should have ended in, in, in 1999 or, 19, or 2000. That's the last time we should have seen people going to commission projects. There are people, there are governors in Nigeria who work, build bridges, build whatever, you know, infrastructure, and nobody is going there to cut any ribbons. There was an, a very, very embarrassing moment in Enugu State where the governor, um, there was a, a you know, a, 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 the part of the road, you know, I think it was a sinkhole that collapsed, you know, and so the road, you I know, there was a hole in the road. Picture. And he, after they finished fixing it, went and, and cut ribbon, <laughs> um, you know, because they fixed a little section of the road that had collapsed, and it's embarrassing. So it's pretty much the same view that I have with the president leaving Abuja to Imo State just to go commission a little tunnel, a drainage tunnel. It's, it's unnecessary. And, and it cost taxpayers money. It cost millions of naira yesterday just to make that trip possible. So those, you know, at the little angles here and there that I think are important to point out. It, it, there's also pictures. I think the same Dick Tiger Road, the vice president in the past, I think in 2019 or so, had been there to commission the same road. But now there's a tunnel with the road that the president now has to come and, and commission. And it just doesn't make any sense why we do things like this in Nigeria. Um, that trip for me was not necessary, except there's a totally different reason why the trip was made. I don't know what you're saying, Osarege, but all I know is that the president said word for word, verbatim, that he is impressed with the projects right. of Hopu Zodima. All right, that's fine. He can't say anything about that. That's fine. All right. Let's take a break here. Um, we've told you really about uh, the top trending stories in Nigeria. Kaduna State's um, primary secondary school pupils will be resuming on Sunday, September 12th. And we told you about Lagos State passing two important bills. They've passed the anti-open grazing bill and they've also passed the VAT collection bill in Lagos. And also that the president visited Imo State yesterday to um, a, a, a quite quite a shut down city in Emo. Um, let's take a break here, then we'll take a look at the papers on Off the Press.